Hey everybody, checking into this month's Marriage Fit Podcast. This is BK from Behind the Camera. Just wanted to let you know we had a little bit of a snafu with the audio recording on this month's podcast and it didn't come through the microphones like we expected it to or recorded through there. But there's so much great content that had already come from Chris and Annie that we didn't want to re-record. So if it's a little off, that's why, but make sure to stick it out. This is a really great podcast and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to episode three. Episode three. Marriage fit. Thank you for joining us, guys. Welcome to the show. Third time's a charm. Third time's always a charm. Yeah. So we are happy to be here. We're excited to present some really good conversation today. Uh, first episode was about our story and commitment. Second episode was about why do people quit, and how to avoid that, and how to take your life to the next level. Exactly. What's topic number three? Get out of your rut. So you're stuck in a rut. Yeah. And uh, you need to make a comeback. Yeah. And what do you do? Because that doesn't happen to anybody at all, ever. No. I feel like it's a very common thing that we hear with clients. Oh, I'm bored, or just don't want to take it to the next level. Or, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. It's like they get stuck and they don't know how to get themselves out of it. And I feel it happens a lot in marriage too. When did you find yourself in the biggest rut? I don't know. I think it's just certain points in your life that you just go through peaks and valleys. And I think everyone's life goes through peaks and valleys. And I think one thing is when you're going through your rut or you're in your rut, you don't think it should happen to you. Mm -hmm. I think I that's one big thing. That. I think it, it, this shouldn't be happening to you because it's uncomfortable and it hurts, and you don't know what to do, and you don't know how to get out of it, and you feel like it doesn't happen to anybody else, and it's happening to you. So I think tip, or point number one is, it happens to everybody. It Getting in a rut happens to everybody. How did you get out of it? I don't even know. What were good success tips to get out of it? I think that, I gotta think about this for a second. That's just, just crazy. Yeah, so thinking. we have a joke that he loves to think, he's a processor, and I'm more of a doer, so I'm like a freight train, and I just go, 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 and we figure it out. And he will, two, three days later, come at me like, with this whole thing of how I saw this vision, I'm like, yeah, we just talked about that two days I'm ago. I'm like a crock pot, she's like a microwave. He's a soaker, yeah. I like to soak it all in, I like to process, I like to plant seeds. I mean, literally, I just asked him I if like he wants to, water to go to a concert like to make it grow. on Saturday night, and I was like, do you want to go? I think it'll be fun. He's like, uh, I had to think about it. And I was like, I did, well, the, I did the other thing. We need to. I did that. Yeah, I yeah, did the other. Maybe I added the uh, Maybe a little bit. So, for anyways. Intensity. intensity. Well, well, so, the, for me, like, what helps me get out of a rut yeah, do is so visualizing, visualizing what it is that I want, ultimately. Because when you're in it, you're in the suck of it sometimes. Like we were just talking about in a workout, right? Like, I don't want to be there. It hurts to pick up a bar sometimes. So I want to tell myself to stop. But what I focus on in that moment is a feeling I'm going to get when I say that I'm done doing what I know I ultimately could do. If I just stop in the middle, I'm going to feel like a failure. But just keep going and chipping away. Like I know some people in the gym too, they're like, that's 150 burpees. I'm like, no, not. It's five rounds of 30. To me, that helps break it down when I think of it that way. And it seems so much more attainable. So I also think it's like playing mind games with yourself. Absolutely. To help you get out. Like constantly varying it and changing it up. There's got to be a novelty component to your life to keep it interesting, to keep it fresh, to keep you growing. Have we ever been in a rut? Yeah, have we? I'm trying to think. I'm sure we have. Where you're, I feel like our ruts get, where we get really consumed with work. Yes. And it's hard then to put each other first. Like even on date night, we'll let it slip back in or we're emailing or I'm just going to take this one more call. And then I remember. It's easy to get in the mode. It changed one time when we were in Minneapolis. And I think I talked about it before, but when we said, let's get dating, and now that's our key word, is like, Q. do you want to get dating? Yeah. And then even last night on date night, we didn't want to go out, we were tired, but we started talking about when we were young and family things and growing up when you went to Arizona and how I went to the lake, and it got us out of our rut, it got us out of work mode. And yeah, it takes you away from your mode. Yeah. So here's the thing, we're creatures of habit. Like, 
biologically. We will get in a routine because it's easy to just go on autopilot and you don't have to think so much. I think the thinking part oh, yeah. is the hard part. How many words do we think a minute? We think 800 words a minute and we only speak two to 300 words a minute. So that's when the people that talk really fast and they can't slow down. The effect. They need, the effect they're talking like they're in their head Love and they her. need to slow their words down from their head into their mouth. Exactly. They need to translate the two. So do you have any good tips for couples trying to get out of their rut? Well, I think your tip is, is great. It's, it's change your perspective, change your focus, change your story. They say, too, what I think is really fun is create a couple's bucket list. So you do something, you write what you want, because we talk about this, you use your birthday card, how there's things that you want to do that I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that. Like when you want to go on the double-decker sightseeing bus in Los Angeles and they fun. lived in L.A. And so you pulled the birthday card because on your birthday, I can't tell you no. But what I found was I had a lot of kind of fun doing it. Because I got you out of your routine. My rut, exactly. Your rut. So the routine is like a rut. So the bucket list is fun because you can put things that you think would be fun. I could put things I could do that would be fun. And then like you pull them out of the hat and you start chipping away things that you would never think that you would enjoy. Or maybe you find some new passion together. Like yes. we really enjoy wine. And yes. Um, hiking, yes. and so maybe we go climb Mount Everest, and then it's a goal together. That's a pretty darn high yes. goal, but whatever it may be, right? So I thought of something while you were talking yeah. about oh, how, I get out of my, how, do, how I get out of my rut. So one of the, 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 help, the helpful things that I do if I'm stuck in a rut, and I can't seem to get out of it, and I'm down on the dumps, or I just don't feel right, is I like to broaden my perspective. So I like to think of bigger than first world problems. I like to think of bigger problems. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is it shrinks my current problem. So the, you also want to dream, build, and have a bucket list. But I also think when you're in the suck, think about broadening your perspective. And then it shrinks your problems at that time too. I agree with that 100%. How do you get out of the fighting and arguing? Fighting an arguing rut? Uh, That's a really good point because I think yeah, if you take it to bigger problems, if you keep that positive attitude, like for example, you'll come home sometimes and you'll leave what you call your friends, i.e. your socks, your shorts, your water bottles, your empty water bar, whatever it is, all over, and I just want to like yell at you. But really, who cares? Like, it'll get picked up. It's not what I want it done. But I should just be excited that you're home and or I'll ask you to talk, but then I get mad because you're talking about work. So I can't have the best, I, I don't want to always be naggy. You have to keep that positive attitude. And let me tell you ladies, the grass is not greener. Oh, it's greens. not. No. It's, no. It's where you water it. Yes. Yeah, right. So think of broadening your perspective like reverse gratitude. Because you know everyone talks about gratitude. You got to be thankful. And yeah. you do. You have to appreciate all the gifts and the talents and all of your blessings that you have bestowed. And it carries on, that have been your life. Yeah. And it's easy to focus on problems and not focus on gratitude, but you can also work with yourself and think of reverse gratitude. Make your problems bigger is almost the same thing as focusing on the positive because you'll put things in perspective. You can also do that in the gym as well, right? Absolutely. You know, so I wake up on my 4 a.m. days, which are like, oh, I don't want to. It's never comfortable for me to get up that early. No. But the first thing I do, I jump out of bed and I say, I'm grateful I'm able to move. And I'm grateful I have a house that I love. Like, just quick. And then all of a sudden, my mind just goes into mode of go down to the road. You know, because if you focus on how you feel in the moment, yeah, then that's where you trick your brain to focus on the, the problem and the pain. But you can actually program your brain, your mind, like you could a computer, if you focus on gratitude first. If you focus on the things you can control and the things that are going good, you can trick and focus on that versus exactly. relying on how you feel. Just like having money, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, I need more money, I don't have enough money. Well, then that's what you're focusing on is not enough. Instead of being feeling plentiful with what you have and that you're able to, we have plenty we're taking care of. Or like you and I do a good job of like the ability to work more. I have the ability and I'm blessed to be able to own my own business and I can go out there and create more revenue or income for myself. Regular gratitude. Yes. BK, what do you do when you're in a rut? It's mental. Totally mental. Mental is a... Is it mental or is it emotional? 
Well, I think your, your emotions play into your mental game. Yes, just like that. Because yeah. the more you let your emotions control your mental, so Bible base says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. It also said that says that feelings are fleeting. Who can trust them? Yes. And that's the big thing I think on is is this a feeling? Or is it in my head? Or is this a real problem? Yes. And really taking that broader view of things of, okay, six months to a year, is this going to matter? Yes. If it does, what am I going to do to change it? Exactly. In my power. Yeah. We just listened to a really good Tim Ferriss podcast, a TED Talk, and he was saying that exact thing of when you think of the problem, list the worst things that could possibly happen. And I've started to do this. As a lot of you know, we would like to have a child. So we're expanding to the next phase of our life. And it freaks me out because I don't have control, right? And so I got into this rut of it's never going to happen for me. This isn't just in our cards. I guess I'm just like, and I love you so much that I'm like, I'll just be happy with our kids. I don't need kids. It was just easier fine. Fine. to get into that rut. So now what I do is I ask myself, Chris knows this is my theme for the year, is asking harder questions for myself. So now I start to ask myself, well, what if this doesn't work? What's going to happen? Well, what if I do gain weight? And it's a lot. What if I can't work here anymore and I'm on bed rest? Okay. It doesn't seem that bad now. Mm -hmm. What if we, what's the worst that happens? And this isn't even bad. Maybe it's our path to adopt. How great is that, that we can give a child a great home? So that's where I feel when I looked at the biggest problem. That's what Tim was talking about. Yeah. When you list these big problems, all of a sudden the problem that you're in, you know, when there's a thing about talking about emotions and different type of words, terminology evoke specific emotions or trending emotions. Like when we think of the word problem, we think it's a bad thing. But what I've learned is successful people literally see the word or feel a problem and they change their definition and it's now an opportunity in disguise. I like that. So when you run up against something, if you're sore from a workout, if you pull a muscle, if you do something, you can actually look at it as an opportunity to $1, get out of a rut and do something else. Because you could be in a good mode, but there might be something better for you. So if something bad happens to you, bad happens to you, you can shift your thing, your focus, and say, wow, there's other opportunities that can present themselves now if I put my attention or my focus on the right things. Or if I ask myself, really good questions, I can uncover some really awesome things that I never would have if that bad thing didn't happen to me. Amen, I like that. You know, I, I remember when I broke my first bone when I was 29 years old. I thought you were going to say broke my first world record. Yeah, man, like, it's not like It was a world record for me. I mean, it broke my foot, so. But, and I like to work out, I like to be physical. So right away, like, dang, dude, I broke my foot, what am I going to do? But then it's like, all of a sudden, I there's so many other things now that I have a chance to really focus on because I can't do all the other things. We were talking about it the other night about if you have too many options in your life, if you're spread out way too thin, you can't make a decision. Yeah. And that's another thing about a rut is maybe you, you have no focus. You, you have too many options. You've created too much options or justifications. Or your surroundings as well. We talk about this having surrounding that, that really represent you in a positive way. And, that are pushing you to get out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and getting better. At the gym, I feel like one of the best things is our trainers are always pushing us to be better owners and they're pushing each other to be better trainers and it's all out of love, it's all fun, but I never feel bored. I never come home from a day of work and think, that was boring. And I always That's say I'd rather be enough. busy than bored, but I also feel like it's because everyone around us is in the same so I'm a little selfish when I get in a rut, BK, where when I know I'm in a rut, I go f seek out my positive friends, and I literally rent some of their motivation. So I'm a pretty motivated guy, yeah. so I like to rent give, motivation. I, I like that. to give How much is that? motivation, I like to juice people a lot, I like to help people a lot, because I like them to feel good, it helps me feel good, yeah. but when I'm not feeling good, the first thing that I do is I go seek out positive, motivating, fun people. And oh my gosh, I snap right out at like fast. So when people get in a rut at the gym and they just can't make it, when somebody doesn't show up to our gym for at least seven days, we run a report every week and we call them slackers because they are. 
and they don't, don't get to the gym. Don't they don't get to the gym. Place. So we start contacting people that don't come to the gym, and we'll text them or whatever and say, hey, where you been? We miss you, blah, 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 blah. But sometimes it's all you need is to reach out and help somebody. But the craziest thing happens is when somebody gets hurt, or they're in a rut, or they got a curveball in their life, or their dog died, or something bad happened, and it's legitimately bad, they isolate themselves. They go in a cave, or they go to the bar, and they do something non-compliant or unhealthy on top of how unhealthy they're feeling for themselves. When I'm like, dude, yeah. get to the gym, come say hi, I want to help, use some of my juice, let me help you, and you'll snap right out of it because that's what I like to do. I want to snap out of this rut as quickly as possible. You know, some things years ago that would take me two weeks to get over, now it takes two days. And then the goal is to have it take two hours, yeah. and then have it take 20 minutes, and then have it take two minutes, have it take 20 seconds, or even two seconds. But you have to find a game plan or a strategy where set yourself up for success, emotionally and mentally, how to get yourself I just had a client See, I'm that's, up now. that's in a I can have coffee and do this. I had a client that's in a rut right now, and so we just had this long conversation. Five stories. And she said, what do you do? And I said, you need to write your story. And you need to write in a perfect world what your story will be. Why do they have to write it? Why do they have to write it? Why do they have to write it? Because then it's real. When you write something down, mm -hmm. you're owning it. It's ownership of that. Mm -hmm. And then you can read it, you can touch it, you can see it, and then it's more applicable to happen. And then when you're cut, stuck in your rut tomorrow and you can't seem to get out of it, you grab it, you read it, and you ingest it. I think, so you uh, believe it. No, I, and I agree with you, but I think my, my vote on why you write stuff down is because it's toxic inside your body. Mm -hmm. It's like a ping pong game in your head where you just, your emotions are going crazy and your head's spinning and you're just getting more and more frustrated and it becomes literally toxic in your body. So when you put it, when you write it out of your head and you put it down on paper, you literally take all that energy out of your body and you can now see it, but then you can show somebody else what it is too. It's real, like you said, because not only, it's false in your head, until somebody else or you can prove it, and when you put it on paper, now you can prove it. She also thought it needed to be this big, grandioso day, right? Oh, it's a fantasy. And then when we fantasy start to camp. break it down, and I told her my day, I said, and basically, it's like today, yeah. right? And she thought in her head, and she thought, oh yeah, like why do I have to think that I need a plane, I need to meet Oprah, that I'm going to the White House? No, it's just, I want to wake up, I want to take my dog for a walk, I want to be able to work from home, and then I want to go have dinner with my husband, and then I want to watch our favorite show, and then I want to go to sleep. There's a phrase that I've heard recently, and they say, act in the now, dream in the future. But I think what happens is people do it backwards. They dream in the now. They're in fantasy land. They're like, yeah. why can't I have this? Why isn't this? Why don't I have more? Why can't I do And they're doing that in today, when they should be acting right now, and then dreaming in the future. So they got it all backwards. So if you really shift your focus on how that is, especially in the moment of stuff, then you can, that's an easier way to pull out of a rut too. I think too, if you work on yourself, that's like a good leading in. Like, I feel like as couples or in the gym too, it's my coach's fault. It's my husband's fault. Oh, yeah, the blame if he would just do this, I would be happy. If they would just pay more attention to me or if they would give me a nutrition plan, and we don't ever take the blame. I just listened to a really good podcast and the guy said, in every situation that went bad, I was there. I'm the responsible one, you know? I need to take responsibility so that then I'm able to grow, get out of my rut. And I feel like that's why a lot of people are in their rut too, because they don't fully take responsibility mm -hmm. for it. And they're constantly looking for something else to, to change them. I always joke that I'm not the weight loss fairy. So like I said, stop playing the blame game on everybody else. That's Take huge. full, re full responsibility. Huge. So then you're able to really see and then receive. And I think too. Because you can't really see and you can't receive it. No, and people a lot of time want to use their past as well, right? Mm -hmm. Past for sure. So I, I was saying, act in the now, dream the future. But you're a product of your past. Mm -hmm. So if you don't take responsibility for how you've acted previ in the pre previously, then it's no wonder why you're in the situation that you're in. And that can be mentally, it can be emotionally, it can be physically. I mean, just think of the fact of physically. If you had a long day at the office, you're tired, you're fatigued, you're beat up from the day, you're not in a present state. You're gonna react or feel worse 
than you would if you were not if you were healthy and in the mass. It's like people that say like diabetes runs in my family. Exactly. Or we're just big boned. Or well, you're not ever big boned genetically. Like that's an environment. And you can you prove by going look at medical history and anthropology. It's exactly. like the further you go back in time, the less and less people weighed, the less and less people ate, the smaller and smaller people were. It's not it's not that, it's just you have to take the responsibility for your actions. I used to do this a lot like when we were first married because growing up I didn't have a dad. And so I was constantly waiting for you to change or to leave. And I was literally out, say out loud, like, don't get too comfortable because I'm just going to leave. And it was my protective mechanism what did I to say? not. What did I say? I'm not going to change it. So. But can you make me a protein shake? Oh! Yeah, I did say that too. So, Lynn's mom is for so, so, yeah, I used to make that a blame game. And then when we would get married, I used to expect, well, why don't you just go make money? I don't, why do I have to work? Why? I never took responsibility for the fact that I wanted to work and I wanted ownership of something, but that was scary. And so I get stuck into this rut and I would tell this story of, well, I shouldn't have to do this. This is one of my expectations when we got married. Well, what does that mean? So I'm just going to sit at home? Like, I didn't want to do that, but I had, like you said, the fantasy of the now. For not dream. dream for the future. Yeah, exactly. So. And yeah, so your past will be a precursor to where your present is. What is one of the ways that you feel that is in our daily habits now that has really changed our rut? Ours? Yeah. Um, that's changed our rut? Well, we're proactive. We think ahead. Like, we'll plan things in advance, where you are both, and I are different personalities, but we do like to fly by the seat of our pants, and we do like to just react to a lot of things. I think we're very proactive versus reactive yeah. right now. I mean, the game changed me when I just started literally writing things down in my calendar and actually creating a Google Calendar for specific things that are important. I realized that we had to schedule our priorities versus prioritize our schedule. So that's what I used to do. I used to prioritize my schedule, but my schedule was still boss, and I was in reactive mode all day long. And I was wondering why I couldn't get out of the frustration or the vicious cycle. But now I literally schedule my priorities first. I write it down, and then nothing comes in front of that because it's already written down. So I really treat the priorities like goal, oh, like date night. You know, it's Wednesday night. It's 7 p.m. Not only do we know, but everybody around us knows it, and they know that that's not nothing's going to get in the way of data because it's already. And it's really scheduled. fun to see our family respect that and the people around us too. I think people want somebody to be so priority driven and so committed to their goals that it's motivating. Yeah. Like people want a role model. People want people to follow and lead them because then they know it's possible. Exactly. And so that's the cool thing about the date night is people really rally around the cause. It's almost like a little crusade type of thing. Wow, they can do it, we can do it. And the people that are doing it actually say, you can do it too. Why don't you do it? Yeah. Question the good. Question the good. You know, we got a lot of things. I try to write them all down, but I can't get them all paper. There's a lot of stuff you guys can do to get out of rut. I think we gave you guys plenty. I don't want to overload them all with everything. Why not? Let's just start going. working no, simple. No, let's get to the gym. Let's keep going. Exactly. Get to the gym. Get out of your rut. We're here to help you every step of the way in your marriage and your finances. So let's do some quick let's do some quick recap. Okay. One of my things was it happens to everybody. Everybody gets in a rut. You're not the only person. No, definitely not. Uh, another thing was my reverse gratitude idea. Make your problems bigger. Change your perspective. Problems are change your definitions. Problems are opportunities in disguise. Uh, write things down. That was part of yours too. Make it real so that you can see it on paper. You can take a picture of it, you can show other people, they can read it too. Make it real by getting it out of your head. Have your bucket Put list. It on, have your bucket list. Dream in the future, act in the now. Yeah. You're a product of your past. Take responsibility for your Take own. total responsibility. Don't do the blame game. Don't base it off emotions like BK said. Really think about the intention of it and where it's coming from and don't just react because yeah. Don't let your emotions be in control. Let your mind be in control. Your mind is the boss of your body. Your body's not the boss of your mind. I like BK and I were just talking before it started about your mind has, or your body has 40% more when your mind says to stop. Your body can actually do 40% more. 
And so yeah, I've been taking that to, into consideration a lot because it's very easy to just be tired and have that be your story. Or, but like you said, but then take it. Like, it, am I physically tired? Because sometimes we are. I was talking to an employee yesterday that said, I realized I needed my sleep. I valued that extra hour and I feel really great for it. But she owned it. But she owned it and she needed it. So not always just like, Getting up, like that can be a rut too. Like, it's less than two, it's like less, is more. less yeah. is more. You know, people think more is more. Really, less can be a lot more. Yeah. But, so yeah, any other recaps? I'm going to jump one in. Do it! People around you. Yes! That's huge. Yeah. Because Associations. you got injured at 29, I got injured at 29, yep. blew my ankle out. And you hounded me oh, yeah? to get back oh, into the gym. That's and right. I really hated that's you right. for a while because that. of it. But it got me back in and kept me going. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. They were doing the foot stretches at almost every after every class. Yeah. Dude, that was totally the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I was telling my story, and you're like, that's right. And so, but now you can tell the people that story too. Yeah. Like it's totally the people around you because you need encouragement all the time. I never leave the gym. I'm happy. Sometimes I'm stuck in my rut of a day, or I might have had like a bad conversation with a client, or something happened, and I'm just we got in a fight. And, I, and I'm sad, and I never leave here, or date night, or like without feeling rejuvenated and happy again. It's just a natural reaction when you're around it. And sometimes, everybody has a time when they don't want to teach or they don't want to come work out. But they always say, whoever regrets a workout. Nobody. Yeah. You never regret that. All no. the wants to go in the video. Yeah. It's a dude. He's kind of an intentional one. Just me or the dog. Oh, yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> well, yeah, I think this was a great conversation. It Guys, was. we hope you enjoyed this episode. We do. Um, share it, comment. You can always post questions. And we're happy yeah, to Yeah, what are some of the tips that you guys do to get out of your rut? That would be an awesome dialogue in the comments. Because some things are little gems, and if you keep them hidden, we never know. Yeah, man. You could say you could help yourself and then a lot of them. Yeah. So. But yeah, really start cute. posting, start communicating. We're happy to. Provide you more awesome topics like this, and we had a great time. I had a good time. Did you have a good time? That most important one's the last thing. Just do it. Jam to the gym. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you next time. Go, go, go.